So we have some screenshots from Google Analytics. Now, these are pretty similar to what's there now. Google changed the interface recently, but the, bless you, the basic, um, the basic look and feel is very similar. And with, we're gonna go over Google Analytics first, just because it's, it's the 800 pound gorilla out there. Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies all have Google Analytics. They might have something else backing it up, but everybody is using Google Analytics. And the reason everybody is using it is it's free. It's also a very legitimate valued third party uh, analytics engine and people trust the data it gives. So here's your basic basic entrance screen to analytics. And they always show you a nice graph and maybe a pie chart. And they have some, uh, they have some basic metrics that pop up right away. Uh, the number of visits versus the number of unique visitors. So a visit to your website is somebody coming to your website over a set period of time and you can have one unique visitor have more than one visit within the course of a reporting period. So I click on a link, I go to a website, I browse around a little, two days later I come back to the website. I'm one unique visitor there, but that's two unique visits. And the way Google tracks this and Web Trends and Adobe Marketing Cloud SaaS Om Omniture, the way they track it is they put a little little data file on your machine called a cookie. And it goes on your browser and it says, John came to this website and looked at these pages and if, I have, if I'm registered with the website, it captures that information. It says the first visit to the website and depending on which analytics package you're looking at, you're gonna have different information captured in the cookie. Now the good thing with cookies, just like cookies on a store shelf, is they expire. So most analytics packages will expire cookies after 60 days. So if I come to the website on January 1st and then I come back in July, odds are they're gonna count me as two different visitors because that cookie expires and they basically flush the information out. Um, another thing with cookies is while they can capture all this great information, by definition, they start to raise some concerns about the user's privacy. So generally they won't capture any personally identifiable information, credit card numbers, etc. But what they will do is they will associate a user with a particular um, set of information that lives on the, on the server. Now, because of this, there are people out there who say, please don't allow anybody to put a cookie on my, on my browser when I go to a website. And that builds in a little bit of a margin of error to every data set you ever look at on Google Analytics or Omniture or Web Trends or any of the other packages. If somebody says, don't put a cookie on my machine, all of these analytics packages will respect that. And the vis visitor becomes somewhat invisible. Um, numbers on this vary from two to five percent in the United States and five to ten percent in uh, the European Union. Um, over um, China, the Far East, Japan, Korea, Republic of Thai China, those numbers vary between the US two to five percent and the European ten percent depending on where you're looking at. Um, if you're interested, drop me an email, I can send you specific data. And these numbers tend to fluctuate with the news and events that happen in the world. So if there's a big credit card breach, all of a sudden everybody's like, no, no, no cookies. And then four months go by, they forget about the credit card breach. And they're like, why can't I see my previously viewed stuff on Amazon when I go there? And they're like, oh, I need to turn the cookies back on. And all of a sudden, they're trackable again. Um, but your cookies are kind of your key key mechanism to capturing information. Um, so a couple other uh, metrics to talk about here. Page views. A page view 
used to be kind of a fuzzy number, but it's become much more standardized now. It's a number of times an entire page loads. Now, back in the day when I was working for, actually working for a website instead of an agency, our investor said, you need to get more page views. And so somebody came up with the idea of um, having a rotating banner pop up on a, on a chat page. And every time that banner popped up, it was a new page view. That kind of fuzzy math trickery doesn't, isn't accepted anymore. So now the definition of a page view is having the majority of the content on a page load up and having it be the unique content and not any advertising um, to inflate your page views. Uh, you can have page views for pages people never see. And when you look at your pages, pages visited report, you'll see some strange things. If you have a site that's very dynamic and has a lot of customized content, sometimes that'll be captured in your uh, in your highest page views reports. So if you go to Amazon.com and you just type in Amazon.com and you've been there before, you actually go through 11 different pages before that final page pops up for you. Now Amazon in, has figured out that they don't care about the 11 intermediate pages, they just care about that final page and that's what they're measuring and most web analytics packages are good at um, suppressing that those intermediate page views when they happen. But that's the definition of your page view. Um, pages per, per visit, pretty straight ahead. The percent of new visits. This is the percentage of new, of first time visits to the site. Um, if it's very high, it can be a good number, it can be a bad number. It depends on what your site is trying to do. If you're an educational site with lots of deep, rich content, but you're not getting that many repeat visitors, i.e. that number stays kind of high in the 87%, you, you may be missing something. But for Beasley Direct here, we get a lot of our business through word of mouth. And people come to the website, look at it for 10 or 15 minutes, and then that's good. They don't need to come back. So we don't mind this number right now. We expect that number to go down as we integrate our uh, our currently our blog, which is currently on a second site, into the main site. We expect that number to go down. But right now, 86% new visits, that's kind of saying, yeah, we're doing something. We're getting people to the website. And they're spending a minute, 25 seconds on it. And about half of them are bouncing off because the site doesn't, doesn't satisfy them. Now what's a bounce? Google by definition divide, defines a bounce on your website as somebody who leaves before 30 seconds. You can alter, you can up and lower, raise and lower that number, but the, the definition is 30 seconds. So Google assumes that if somebody's come to your website and they spend 31 seconds on it, it's not a bounce. They've actually taken some time to get some information from it. Um, Now, over here on analytics, um, there are lots of areas you can drill down, and we will we'll actually do some lifetime drilling here, but you can look at the demographics of the visitors to your site, their um, interests and psychographics, where they've come from, how they behave once they get to your site, the technology, are they using an iPhone or an Android, are they using a, a MacBook or a ThinkPad, and you can start to drill down on some of that, help you design a site that better fits the majority of your audience. Um, you can look at how people go through the site, which pages they go through, their path they take. We call it a click path. It's also called visitor flow, flow and analytics. Um, you can create custom dashboards, and these can be incredibly useful. Um, you can look at industry segments, you can look at specific sections of the site and just go straight there without having to create a report every time you visit. Um, you can have intelligence events um, and then you can look at ways of acquisition, paid, organic, yes.
So the, the question was, is there a set of industry benchmarks you can compare your website's performance to? Um, yes, there are, and there are numerous sources for it, but the first one is going to be within Google Analytics yourself. When you're setting up Google Analytics, one of the in initial questions is, do you want to share information anonymously about your your site's performance vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the industry? And generally, you want to check that unless you're in a uh, industry that's really conscious of personally identifiable information. And that's going to allow you to get some industry benchmarks and you can ask you can compare your site's performance within analytics versus the rest of the industry. Now, that being said, Google Analytics views of the industries and the different buckets are really, really broad. They're not quite as broad as the SIC industry codes and the federal government, but they're approaching it. So we're a direct marketing agency and online marketing. We are viewed in the same bucket as somebody like an Ogilvy, or a BDD, or what was the name of the uh, agency in Mad Men? We're viewed the same as all of them. And um, it's not, it's a better benchmark would be another Silicon Valley industry. So you need to go to third party sources to get really good actionable information. Um, some of the ones I'd like to go to for benchmarking and we do this a lot when we're pitching new clients saying, okay, how are you performing? How can we measure it against other, other uh, competitors out there? We'll go to sites like eMarketer, Marketing Sherpa, eConsultancy. Now eConsultancy is out of Britain, but they have some really, really amazing information. Um, and a lot of it is international. They do have some British, uh, British only e-commerce stuff. It can be incredibly helpful, but they, they're very good at bringing together a lot of information. And then you can get even more specific and go to search in your land, search in your world, webmaster world for um, benchmarks within the search industry, etc. Constant contact, exact target, silver pop will give you email benchmarks. So. Google Analytics will give you benchmarks, but oftentimes they get a little too broad. Now, um, there are some PPC uh, variations on this we'll talk about when we get there that come from AdWords and from Bing. When you're buying ads on Bing, they'll give you competitive share voice metrics that um, are really accurate and really, really are helpful. Okay, so moving on, um, this is a look at some AdWords campaigns, and it's not for Beasley Direct, it's for um, one of our old clients, and as you can tell, we've, we've kind of X'd over the client's name. They sold these very exciting labels you put on the side of the utility boxes, saying, please don't dig here, because you'll electrocute yourself and take the power out for the whole neighborhood. Um, not really sexy, exciting stuff, but it's a good product that needs to be sold. And we did some fairly uh, fairly cursory PPC campaign for them. We did some website cleaning up. Um, this was the initial snapshot when we came in before we had done anything. One of the first things we said was, what do you want to accomplish with your campaigns? And how are we going to measure that in Google Analytics? And that involves setting up a goal, a goal in Google Analytics and Web Trends and Omniture have similar things, is just saying somebody has taken these actions on my website and has accomplished a marketing goal, something that satisfies my need to track them. It could be a sale, it could be a white paper download, it could be watching a video, it could be watching a video all the way to completion, it could be reading a page all the way through. And you you set up the goals in the admin section. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And then you can have them pop up within all your reports. And like I said, this was uh, before we came on board. We just set up the goals. But we had our goal, conversion rate, the value of the goal. We can assign a dollar value to every, every goal. 
and a white paper download may be worth $50 and a request for quote may be worth $250 and you can assign that with the goal value and have that populate your standard reports as you go through. That's a great thing about analytics and to a lesser extent um, Adobe Omniture. You can do a lot of customization to meet your individual needs as a marketer. Um, Within the acquisition, you can look at different things. These are AdWords campaigns. You can also look at e-marketing, social media, display marketing. Um, if you had a, a very specific landing page that you put together just for a trade show, and you had a little short, in, a little short bit.ly URL or a teeny URL driving people to the landing page, you can, uh, you can put it in here under campaigns.